Hello and welcome back. And before we start today's video, we got to talk a little bit about mixing stuff up, hybrids, and ultimately things that when we find them are greater than the sum of their parts. Pulling together the best of what we want from technology, from society, from social media, multimedia and more can often be incredibly beneficial. Look at great combinations in the past. Pie and mash, cider and black, Charles dance and anything that man touches turns to gold. But let's be honest, they're not always true. Seagulls in this studio are a fantastic example. But today I want to talk about this. I'm going to talk about the Locker Store Gen 3 series coming later in 2024. This isn't it, this is the Gen 2 series, but today I want to talk about some phenomenal hybrid architecture from Acer Store that is pulling a lot of different things from a lot of different angles and packing it all in a single package. And hopefully by the end of this video, we'll work out whether we're excited about it or slightly worried about just how much they've crammed inside this tiny enclosure. That is right, hot off the heels of our video a few days ago talking about the Flash Door series, uh, the Gen 2 Flash Door, this isn't it, but the Flash Door Gen 2 that's going to be revealed in a month or two. We've also got to talk about some of the other stuff that Acer Store have got planned for later in 2024. And one of those things is a follow-up or at least a deviation to the existing portfolio of the Locker Store series. We're currently, as we speak, on the Locker Store Gen 2 series, an Intel Celeron powered system rocking out the gate with four M.2 NVMe slots inside an Intel Celeron processor inside uh, Diddy R4, memory up to 16 gig. Ultimately, a lovely little system that was effectively, in many ways, a double up on the previous generation. Now, the Locker Store Gen 3 that's gonna be revealed next month in full during the Computex 2024 event over in Taipei, again, approaches a lot of the hardware architecture of the previous generation and kind of doubles it in a number of different ways. I'm sure the thumbnail already gave it away there. One of the earliest things that I think is gonna catch a lot of people's eye is this system is rocking out the gate with both five gigabit ethernet and 10 gigabit ethernet, and it's got two ports. That means this system's rocking out the gate with a potential external network connectivity on the four, six, eight, and 10 bay system of 30 gigabits per second external network connectivity there, three gigabytes per second to be shared out, but not always shared out amongst multiple users there on the rear. So we'll come back to the ports later on in the video because that is gonna be very important. But much like the Flash Store uh, Gen 2 series that we talked about a few days ago here on the channel, the Locker Store Gen 3 series is rocking out the gate with a uh, an AMD embedded Ryzen processor, the V3C14, a quad core eight thread processor that doesn't have integrated graphics, something that a lot of you in the comments of the previous video really took umbrage with. And Fair Play to Acer Store really took to that comment thread to answer a lot of people's queries, let's face it, about the lack of quick sync support there, because they're not going with the integrated Intel CPU, and you know, that is gonna be true of this Locker Store series. This is not going to seemingly be a multimedia focused machine. Now, we don't know right now, hopefully Acer Store will probably correct us in the comments, but we don't know right now whether the Gen 3 series is replacing the Gen 2 series, or this is going to be a splinter series where you, if you want Intel Quick Sync, if you want uh, Plexiclang's coding at the most efficient level, then you've got the Gen 2 series on this side, and over here you've got the Gen 3 for file throughput all the way through and through. But that's CPU, uh, alongside its uh, 2.3 gigahertz, it can be burst up to, um, I think, 3.6 gigahertz uh, clock speed when needed. Although it doesn't have integrated graphics, what it does have that pleased a lot of users is the support of ECC memory there. At DDR5, this system, with its support of ECC for that fast fluid file transmission, is going to be very, very useful at, I would argue, the business and even approaching that enterprise level there. We don't have confirmation on the memory that each of the four, six, eight, and 10 bay device uh, versions are going to feature, but more than likely it's gonna scale up a little bit towards that larger revision. They've done that before, and almost certainly it'll probably, if not arriving with 32 gig, it'll probably arrive with 16 gig at the larger level, and maybe it'll sit at eight gig, but we've got no confirmation on that. And again, I'm sure someone at Acer Store will either correct me, or during the Q&A that we're definitely gonna be doing very, very soon uh, with Marco over in Taipei, um, we're gonna get a lot of your questions answered. Let them know uh, let us know in the comments what those questions are going to be and we'll put those directly to him but alongside that memory of course this system is 
a hybrid storage in not just those storage, uh, the network connections that we've discussed. Uh, as mentioned, the 4, 6, 8, and 10 base system is arriving with 4 bays, 6 bays, and there's an 8 bay and a 10 bay system SATA, 3.5 inch uh, media and 2.5 inch uh, SATA media supported there. Means that you're going to have a tremendous amount of throughput once you start rolling in your RAID. It supports VTRFS volumes, but it doesn't support flexible RAID configurations like your Synology SHR or your TerraMaster T RAID, but you do have the normal RAID configuration level supported there. Um, also, I will add when it comes to storage media, I touched on this in a video a few weeks ago. Currently, Asia Store is the only brand I could find that lists the current 24 TB generation, I hate Seagulls, uh, 24 TB Seagate Iowolf drives on the compatibility listings. I'm sure that's going to change over time, but they were one of the first to actually test and verify support of those drives on their platform. That means that the 10 base system. Just like that, 240 terabytes uh, to play with without factoring in your RAID there. But it doesn't stop there. Because on top of that, the system arrives with, and again, this is the previous generation, the system arrives with four M.2 slots inside. So not only have you got the four, six, eight, or 10 bays of SATA storage there, which again, remember, you could create individual pools, SATA SSD, and traditional 3.5 inch hard drive, but then you've got the option to add four M.2 NVMEs each of which can be used for caching or as a raw storage pool, or two and two, separate it out, give yourself some caching, give yourself a faster scratch disk. And thanks to that CPU, you got support of Gen 4 SSDs up to eight terabytes. That means this system is a powerhouse of storage capability there. There's also support of expansion devices. Asus still have a USB 3.2 Gen 2 JBOD expansion device. I believe there is even an 8-bay, but I think that 8-bay might be 5 gig USB. I'm not sure if they've revisited and created a larger 8-bay um, expansion for their lineup. But again, that amount of storage, particularly at Gen 4 speeds as well, so that means each of those slots at Gen 4 times 1 is going to give you up to a potential 2,000 megabytes per second performance for each of those M.2 NVMe. So the ability to fully saturate those external connections is approaching viable, I would argue. Now, alongside the DECC memory, alongside that hybrid storage, let's talk about the network connectivity. As mentioned, this is the previous generation, which only arrives, I say only, uh, with two 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports there. Now, 5 GBE on two of those and 10 GB on the other two is massive. I've never seen a desktop a NAS device ever arrive with that. And I mean, ever. I've seen two 10s, but never a desktop that's got all of those. I've seen normally a 10G and a couple of 1Gs, maybe 2.5 and a 10, never five and 10s. Now, why is that a big deal? Number one, it means that they have utilized effectively all of the bandwidth they possibly can. Rather than lumping in 2.5, lumping in ones, and then there's a little bit of bandwidth going to waste, they have fully utilized everything they could in there. And there's going to be people in the comments that go, well, no one uses 5G, get out of town. What a waste of everyone's time. Now, to that I would say, number one, some devices have 2.5 and 5G. You can get adapters that give you USB to 5 gigabit Ethernet if you choose. Next, I would argue, if you have got a bunch of 10 GBE devices, isn't it nicer to know that thanks to auto negotiation, you can still at least take advantage of half of the available 10 GBE that your connected devices could be going into with the additional slots on this device that's got the two fives and the two tens, rather than being throttled down even lower. I'm glad that Asus Store at least utilizing as much of that available bandwidth as they possibly could. 5GB is by no means mainstream. I would even argue it is right now one of the most niche connections in the market, more so than 25 gig fiber and even 40 gig fiber. But it still means that that bandwidth is not going at a loss. Now, once you combine in the fact that things like link aggregation, port trunking, and SMB multi-channel, to keep things nice and simple, alongside things like load, balancer in the, uh, load balancing are in the market, it means that if your device has got enough USB ports and you're using things like Thunderbolt 10G adapters or PCI upgrade cards, there is actually a viable possibility that you could have one client device, realistically a Windows device, you could have a single device ported in with two 10s, two 5s, and have a 30 gigabit channel between your client machine and this device. For editing, that's real. And add to that, those M2 NVMEs, 
this thing has got a lot under the bonnet to play with. I mean, the rest of the network connectivity, uh, uh, standard connectivity, it's good, but it's overshadowed massively by what we've talked about. There's USB 3.2 Gen 2, 10 gigabit connectivity there, and there's even USB 4 connectivity, allowing you to take advantage of, you know, 3.3 uh, gigabytes per second to 3.5 gigabytes per second USB 4 M2 NVMe SSDs. It's lovely stuff. Ultimately, this has got a lot crammed in. Those individual component parts are turning each of these 4, 6, 8, and 10 base systems into absolute powerhouses of internal and external bandwidth there. I would also add, for those that aren't in the know, um, last year, Asus Store released this. This is their Asus Store combo card. It's got a 10 GBE and two M.2 NVMe slot uh, PCB on here. Now, whether this is going to be compatible with the newer generation is pretty slim. Realistically, it won't be without serious driver upheaval, but it is still a Linux system. So that at least means that they are in control of the firmware. They may be able to get something where this card works in there. They already use a PCIe switch system where the system reboots into what that card inside can do. But it's whether there is the physical capability to remove the M.2 4 slot card inside there, swap it for this 2 slot card, and give yourself another 10 gig to play with there. But again, a lot of that will come down to what happens in the background over at Acer Store, whether they think it's viable as an investment to do that. Now, there will also be users out there that want to talk about ADM, Acer Store's NAS software. They're going to be uh, apparently showing off, or at least alluding to, ADM 5 over at Computex next month. But on top of that, ADM is still not going to be everyone's cup of tea. I would argue in the NAS software world, it's not as advanced, does not as a, a, a feature rich as your likes of your Synology DSM and QNAP QT, as it has to be said. I already alluded to a few things that are absent on that software, such as a fluid RAID. I don't have support of um, ZFS or anything like that, which is a shame because this hardware could definitely be used with ZFS. Now, is that the end of the road? No, because as mentioned in the flash door video, um, Asus Store are one of the few brands out there that are totally cool with you, I say totally, um, really cool with you using Unraid or TrueNAS on a USB on their systems. You can go ahead and install that software on their systems, and as long as that software is not geared manually or automatically in a, a detrimental way to the hardware, such as overcooking the CPU, they will still honor that hardware warranty of three years with these systems. Now, we have to at least acknowledge that the lack of integrated graphics on this system does make the installation of Unraid and TrueNAS and the like on it difficult because you don't have a visual output to go into the BIOS and do more. Now, there are workarounds, and hopefully, in a few months' time, we will show some of those workarounds to install a third-party OS. But it's the fact that the installation of that third-party OS is possible and, more importantly, not going to knock your warranty, which I would say... Is great stuff and ultimately the locker store gen 3 series i think is definitely 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 going to be a system to keep an eye on keep in mind of course we don't know the pricing we don't know the release date yet this could be a system that's still in development and things might change they may look at the four six eight and ten bay and go well that's a little bit too much for the four bay we'll start playing around with our portfolio we simply don't know but Nonetheless, I think this is a system that's probably going to arrive at around 100 to maybe 150 nicker, more than a Gen 2 series due to just the sheer uh, improvements within the hardware architecture. And I would also argue I think we're looking at a Q3 release for this because this doesn't seem like a system that's still being written down on the back of a napkin in the back of a pub. This seems like a realistic product that is long, long, long into its development. Stay tuned when we learn more about this. There's an article linked in the description uh, to uh, this product, everything we know that we'll be updating over time. And obviously, uh, Computex next month we'll try and cover it a little bit more then I will update the article alongside the Flash Door Gen 2 as well if you've enjoyed this let me know if you've got any questions about this product maybe the Flash Door or ones for Acer Store as alluded to earlier in the video we will be doing a dedicated Q&A uh, with a representative from Acer Store answering your questions so let me know below and if they're not already answered by them there they'll most certainly be answered in the video or maybe both thank you so much for watching have yourselves a fantastic week